you want to start this thing now? Mm-hmm. Right, gentlemen, we can start off by both of you introducing yourselves to that thing there. So another one said, yo, I'm me, Tenor, see? <laughs> I'm me, Keaton, see? Because people might not know. Go on, Ati. Yeah, my name is Ati. Tenor still in. Yeah, key to roots, black legacy label. Blah! So, 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 so. I don't mean that, Rufus. Okay, gentlemen, where are we gonna start? Where are we going to start? Now, Tenor, I take it, gentlemen. Wait, pause that. Starting with you, Tenor. We would like you to tell us a little bit about your family. We want to know your star sign for all the women that are out there gonna be watching this thing, thinking Tenor Stellings on the telly. Where's the box of Kleenex? And um. Where you went to school, I want to know a little bit more about your your formative years. I was, I was born in East London, uh, Stratford. And I, I was schooled most of my life in England, one year in Jamaica. And, um, yeah, that's it. And the same to you, Keith. Yeah, you know, um, I was born in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire, you know, countryman, you know. Um, yeah, went to primary school in Huddersfield, you know, but reached our London at the age of 11, you know, and um, been down here ever since, you know, to my detriment. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, gentlemen, starting with you again, Tanner, can you remember the first time that you heard reggae music? You know, we said before, like, Bob Marley is what it is, you feel no pain. When's the first time you felt no pain? And what inspired you to become an artist? Um, well, if, just some more style vibes, huh? Just a more below the more style, knowing that the more style is there. And my experience, I mean, of, let me say, of history. See it and how I fit into that, and I just bring it out in that, you know. So I just love music naturally. So, in, in, in these things, thinking of these things, vibing these things, it just comes out in my creativity, you know. And just the vibes, really, it's not specific, but if anything, I'll just have a more style. When's the first time you heard reggae music and what inspired you to become an artist or a producer? Well, from a from a middle school youth still, I had a bigger well, I have a big brother, a big brother, Joseph, you know. He's been collecting um records from me like the age of ten still, you know, and so I've been listening to reggae music, you know, from 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 five. Because means five years my senior, you know. But um, you know, but you know, to my father, with the old grandpa and gram, you know, the the standard gram that most black people had, you know. They used to play the Blue Beat and, you know, Prince Buster and all these people. So from a barn, I hear them tune there, you know what I mean, you know. And then that's really my grounding, you know. What was the first reggae record you heard? The first reggae record I heard. This is not going to be an easy question. Wow. Well, no, nah, it goes back away. It goes back away still. My brother, I remember him buying a 7-inch. Buying a 7-inch and coming home with that 7-inch. He was excited, man, you know. Um, and that, that tune, you know. Um, give me a minute. I remember that tune, you know. I can, I can remember the moment, even, you know. Um, it's a way back still. Way back. Many years ago now. Um, I'll have to try and remember it still, okay. you know. I'll tell you what, while you're doing that, tell her who are your musical influences. I mean, worldwide, I'm reading reggae. Worldwide? Right, there's enough of them, there's too much to mention. You know I mean? But me like my favorite female singer, like Gladys Knight. And, um, let me see. We have enough other singers who will check. Sometimes you like, you may relax you now, certain time you know, you put it on, listen to a couple of tunes and move on to something else, you know, but, yeah, I like that vibe there, you know, soulful, soulful feeling, soothing kind of vibes, you know, 
but then there's so much, so much black people sing, so anyway, so, you know, there's enough, worthy, too much to mention. Um, influential wise, um, if it's, if it's um, musician wise, then I've always been intrigued by Sly and Rabbi, you know. Um, vocal wise, singer wise, artist wise, it's a difficult one because there's many man, you know what I mean, you know. The inspiration is vast, you know what I'm saying, so. Um, Give us a couple of your favorite artists. I could, I could, I could narrow it down to like um, inspiration wise. Um, there's a singer called Nago Morris, he used to be part of the Eptones, you know. And, um, you know, Pablo Moses, you know, um, Deborah Williams, you know, Earl Zero, you know, there's, there's quite a few, but then Monday really sort of, you know, like where you, 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 the hair stand up on the back of your neck kind of thing, you know what I mean? That kind of vibe there, you know what I mean? Just to hear the tone of the voice alone, you know what I mean? You know? Um, yeah, really, that, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's the way it is. Okay, Tenor, what was the name, if indeed you can remember, what was the name of the first record you bought, and where did you buy it? Yeah, I mean, buy my first record at uh, Uptown Park, Queen's Market, you know, that uh, one star, a tune called Sata and Prius Jar, by uh, Ross Frankie, you know, that was about, that was about 11, 12. Yeah, the, the first first, the first record I bought, you know, was in Daddy Cool's. I remember in Daddy Cool's down um, in the West End. Um, and if anybody remember, Daddy Cool's used to be like a dance, you know. And even to get to to get certain copies of certain tune, King, you had to quick because from the tune touch, one second your man I put up the man, you know. And he's had you you're quicker, you're slow, you know what I mean? But I I bought this tune called um, Living on Borrowed Time. I can't remember the artist's name. I don't remember the artist's name, but I remember that it was a 12 inch, you know. And that was the first tune I bought. But I was, I've never been a big record buyer as such, because my brother, my bigger brother, him had a record man, you know what I mean? So me, me, I get all my schooling from him, kind of thing, musical wise. You see what I say, you know? You know, there's always, you know, you can't my, my, my other part in that way there, you know what I mean? You know? So yeah. Okay, moving back to you, Tana. Tana, what? was the first sound system that you ever listened to and who are your favourite sound systems from back in the day up to the 21st century? Well, I mean, traditionally, why, this is something within. I, let me just say, Jashaka, Tata, the song, you know, the mother said, yeah, Away and it just steer continually, continually. That was Shaka. And, um, and there's other songs still. My father's songs, but the first song I'm going to listen to. My dad used to have a song called The Saint. He used to draw the little Roger Moore picture of the <laughs> ring around the head that was on the boxes. Mm -hmm. So. That was the first song we listened to. You see, it was around enough to long shot, kick the bucket. It was around other tunes about what is ready. And, um, and yeah, enough of them. Enough of them. Just enough Jimmy Cliff. And which one they used to run. Uh, and Blue Beat. You know? So, so the first the song. I mean, never did all the mics still, I used to just, you know, come in a little bit still, you know. But that's the first song you remember. GT, same question to you. Mm. What was the first sound system you, do you understand that again? What was the first sound system you ever listened to? And who were your favourite sounds from then to now? Um, I, I think the first sound that I would have listened to um, would have been a a song called Sir Kennedy 
from uh, Manor Park, East London, you know. Um, I believe it would have been doing a one blues dance. You know, I'm sneak out of the yard late at night with my parents. You know what I mean? Hiding, jumping up a bit of my clothes on <laughs> that night there. You know, and when, they, when they think I'm, I'm in my bed, I sleep, stuck out and I went with my brother to one blues. I think I was about 13 or so, yeah. And um, I, I believe it was uh, Sam Costa Kennedy. Um, influential wise, the son that's influenced me most in my life has been Shaka, definitely, you know. Shaka's literally. Um, Why Shaka? Yeah. I grew up as a Pentecostal Christian, you know. So for me, like, it's always been about the spiritual matters in life, you know what I mean, you know. And um, there was a time when when, when um, the Pentecostal church, you know, it was dealing with the spiritual side of things, but it wasn't dealing with with the social issues, issues of the time, you know what I'm saying, you know. So, so more so, it, I think a lot of us did kind of grew up in the Pentecostal church at that time, you know what I mean, but we needed more, you know what I'm saying, and I went to um, a club called QB's, you know, I think that, that, that club, after that it was called Four Aces, I think, but um, that night there, Shaka was playing, was playing there, Quaker was supposed to play with Shaka, but, he, but Quaker didn't turn up that night there, and that was my first Shaka dance, you know what I mean, when I went there, I witnessed something that I I never thought it would be possible, you know what I mean, the, the, the power of the spirit in there, you know, I could relate, um, I could, it's something that I could relate church to, because in church there was like a strong spiritual vibe with the gathering of the people, you know what I'm saying, and then I went there now and I see a gathering of the people and, and, and a spiritual vibes, you know, so that's when Shaka really reached me and I realised there was something else, you know what I mean, and from that now, you know. Biblical, yeah man, I attend Shaka regular because it, it come like, came like, when you, when you got a Shaka dance now, it come like, he was coming like a minister, you know, I preach a sermon kind of, you know, so you could relate, funny in an ironic way, you know what I mean, you could relate the church to that, so I found myself going to church and going to Shaka, you know, it was a strange thing, but, but um, it was deep and powerful. And really, that's the ground, the grounding of me today. You know what I mean? You know, has to be said. Yeah, that's what we're here. Mm. Gentlemen, same question to both of you. Favorite sounds now in the twenty-first century. You first turn up. Right, I would be them sewing up on the level like, like Eric, we have variation, Jack Toby, Jack Wise, and Touch Up Bob. Um, it's strange. I, I, I wouldn't say I've got any sort of favourite sound as such. You know about if 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 it's a solo, well, there'd be two sounds. If if anything, would be Abba Shanti, you know, and, and Channel One, because. I always say to people, you know, people laugh when I say this. Like I feel like I'm I'm stuck in a time warp back in the eighties, the vibes of the eighties, you know what I'm saying? And the only sounds that really do anything for me is man that kinda kinda hold that kind of vibe. You know, the back in the day vibe. So it'd be them them two man really, you know what I mean? As such. You know, there's other good sounds like this too, but I think everybody, you know, different sounds touch different people. You know, they've all got their own signatures, isn't it? You know what I mean? So that's the way it goes. But Shanti and, and, and Channel One, you know, if, when I listen to them, I, I can kind of feel, it's like I feel like I'm, I've gone back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You see what I say? And that's a good thing still. Yeah, me, me too. Me, me like, me check for them. Out. And also, me like songs experimental. You know, me like experimental sounds. You know, you know, me, me love the traditional Zine thing. But then, we just like for years something, but it, we would have said new. You know, see, coming us a while we not turn. You know. Yeah, like me, I'm really, really into new, new things <laughs> still. You know, I me mean, like, me like the, the, the back in the ancient vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, 
foundation. You know, the foundation thing, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, the legacy, you know, is is um, what I'm, I'm about. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and to preserve, you know, the um, the back in the day vibe. You know what I'm saying? You know. You will. I will that say. You have to preserve the back end of the day of him. Mm. If you are, even if you are gonna try the new thing, mm. the new thing, you have to hear the back end of the day thing. Definitely. You know, see? That's so, because it's the foundation. You can't. Yeah, yeah. If it if, if it goes off of it, off of it, then man like the I gonna say, nah, man. You know, see? Well, and even man like I come and say, why, nah, man, that's gonna be too. You know, the one hear the traditional thing, you know, which which make make it up, you know, originally. Well, it's like to know where you are in the present. Mm. You have to know the past. You understand? Otherwise, the present will have no foundation. See that, see that. And then, likewise, the future will have no foundation at all, if there would be any. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's important that we, that we remember mm. what's happened, what's, what has been. You know what I'm saying? So we remember where we're going. Or we remember the order, because back in them time, there was a kind of order. You know what I'm saying? You know? And a vibe. Yeah, and um, it's it important that that, 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 that that we keep that alive, you know what I mean? You know? Mm. Which that man is doing still, so it's a blessing still. Alright, Senna. Next question. How did you get into the business? How did you go from being an ordinary common garden is walking about to becoming tennis tennis? Nothing's really changed. You know what I mean? Nothing's really changed. It's just well, it's a part of it. So I can't see any difference. Like I'll become someone. You know, I mean? I'm just just all of us just developing in our own ways, you know. And sometimes we don't even realise that it's, it's happening. So you know, I'm just uh, just I am, you know. What I've really meant was this in the same way that Bob Marley brought Burning Spear into the business. Who brought you into the business town? Who brought me into the business? Yeah. Who brought me into the business? You mean who brought me to the first studio? The first studio that I went to was in Northampton. Even though the first band that I sung with was in London. The first band was called Coptic Roots. Didn't do no shows, but we used to rehearse. And you know, it's, it's a real quite regular you know, back in the eighties. So but um then I moved I was in Northampton down to a studio up there. It's, it's with TNT Roots and Virgin Winston, Beckford. Yeah. So and then I moved. Nothing come out yet, nothing released. It just works out everywhere we got vibes we could have the sauna. I mean, but then we moved back to London and I said, we buck up the eye. We so buck up key to the roots. I mean, they bring some, some, one of them four chuck dog. And they were circulating. Yeah, some stuff too, <laughs> man. So, it was a year, some of them. And then, you know, it's, it's like, in the year, I know, it's, it's like a vibe thing. If, not just me, one. They're not just, them, you know, yeah, well, if you can come in, come in. And then, you know, see them sound read. Yeah, yeah. Come in, come. In. You know what I mean? Cause everybody a jam. If they not jam, one place in my jam somewhere else. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's one Sunday, they say, yeah, I got this place got vibes too. Got late, and book him up on a region called Blacker, Tall. See, yeah, Blacker, um, then right Black, changing name now. Still, um, yeah. So, um, I think that was it. First release was from there, called Commercial Boy. Commercial Boy, you know, if you know, this thing, one side, B side, though, was more, tum, 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 
It's a special dub plate mix in a few town. Please do a parito. What are you for? Mix me down, mix me down because a ragamuffin rule in a few town. Looking at the dance, and you will see ragamuffin is in your vicinity. Uh, humble yourself and have respect. Uh, for two afraid to you, not get none yet. Come in, oh man, gosh, it's a burial tonight. Doom to go to home, go go to go to home. Right, that was the first release. And that was the first release, and but really, that was the vibes, you know. Um, vibes, what's it called? It was vibes, vibes, vibes studio. Yeah, yeah. Three of me was involved in yeah. that production there. Uh -huh. So all that long talk. <laughs> I want to say, yeah, it was vibes <laughs> studio. Vibes studio. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, I'm gonna go hundred miles and I'll come back. Yeah, getting into the business, um, you mean as in start releasing or yes, playing? Yes, both. Well, how I started playing, there's a, a, um, a brethren of mine called Jalini, yeah? Right, Lenny was a shaka man too, you know what I mean? Um, and what I'm now, uh, yeah, one day I, I see Lenny playing a, a, a guitar, I see him playing a bass guitar, man, you know what I mean? And he was playing, I remember he was playing like, I think it was um, Lion Eagles or something. So. And I was intrigued. I said, hold on there. Hold on, hold on. Come play that. And I thought, hold on, hold on. I can do that, man. You know what I mean? And Lenny, when you see when you see I had interest now, he gave me one bass guitar. I want a whole thing, you know. I think he had about two strings on it or something like that. You know what I mean? But boy, from I got that thing, you know, me lived on that thing there. I lived on it, man. I lived on it. My life changed. From that day when I got that bass guitar there, you know what I mean? And every day I just practice and practice and Lenny show me one and two things and I practice and I practice and I practice. And um it just moved on, it moved on, it moved on man. You know, one day I saw a documentary on TV man, Dennis Bobbill, right? And he was doing a little just a little showcase on how you build a tune in the studio, you know what I mean? And sat down on the drums and he fling a drum beat down and then he Draw the bass, and I thought, whoa, you know what I mean? And that was my real influence into thinking, you know something, let me go and try and do some, try and put tune together, you know what I mean? So, little by little, now we, we go get little things. My first drum, my first drum was at an old microphone, two old microphones. I couldn't really afford no kit or nothing, you know what I'm saying? You know, them days, their things are hard, you know what I mean? So, so I had to make a, a kick drum with a mic, and I had to make the, the um, I mean, my snare was a plastic bag on a chair, you know what I'm saying? And the height was a plastic bag on the table. And I put one mic in between the two. See the drum there? <laughs> you see what I said? And things was good, Bridget. I had a little, a little tape recorder. I record the drums. Take a, I'm just doing overdubs, you know what I mean? That's how I learned, man. You know what I'm saying? The process was long. And half of the time, I don't even know if it was working, you know what I'm saying? But... But it was good, man. You know what I'm saying? And it changed my life. It changed my life. I became consumed with it. You know what I'm saying? You know? Just became consumed with, like, um, learning new instruments. Started going to jam sessions. The good thing about East London is that they had a good mu musician community. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And facilities. You know what I mean, Tenor? Mm -hmm. Enough bands and things. So, everywhere you go now, there's a jam session and there's this and that. And the thing about the jam sessions, there used to be a jam session in a place called Eve Road. Community center, brutal, brutal bridging. That's when man learn because what happened now? You pick up an instrument, you pick up a guitar, you got 30 seconds to get that chord. If you not have that card there, come off. That's how the man is to go, go it, you know what I mean? So man is to learn quick. And through that jam session now, I learned to play gits, I learned to play drums, keys, the works, you know what I'm saying? You know? And yeah, I just moved on, just moved on, moved on from there. Um, Release wise now, release wise, just like um, Tenor said, you know, um, a, a brother called called Blacker at that time there, have a new name now still, and I knew Vibes, <laughs> but yeah man, Blacker, Blacker Vibes Studio, you know, I mean, notorious brother, about six foot five and six foot five in personality, personality as well, you know what I mean, um, yeah, 
but he had a, a, a studio called Vibes, you know, and um, the first release was was um, Commercial Boy. I think Commercial Boy was the um, B side, Barrel Tonight the A side, you know, and that was tenor um, voice in the tune, and me and Black are building the tune, you know. Um, yeah, that's sort of quick skeleton of of the past, you know what I mean? Alright, gentlemen, next question, Tenor. What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you in a dance? Right. Yeah. I've really thought of it. <laughs> no, keep it. Keep it. What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you? Come back to you, Tenor. The funniest thing, funny. Yeah. Um. I can't remember any funny moments, man. You know what I mean? Uh, I've been a bit of a fu funny person in respect of the dance that I go to. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and really, I was a, like a stringent shaka follower. You know, in a damn day, they saw. <laughs> I can't remember not funny, everything, the kind of. I, I, was, I was a very spiritual kind of person, so like, you know what I mean? I, I think half the time I didn't remember what was going on, I was in spirit. <laughs> I was in spirit, I just soaking vibes, you know what I mean? So like, I don't remember nothing funny as such. There were some funny people in there, some funny skanking that used to go on that thing, you know what I mean? But, um, uh, nothing that stands out. I mean, yeah, funny enough, I remember there was a skanking competition one time. There was a skanking competition, and one man, one man, it looked like this brother it was like tri tri triple jointed or something, man. You know what I mean? Because the brother was like, you know, like Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> the man was flexible, and it was a skanking one brother who had a, had a uh, like a bowler hat. And the kick off the ball of hat bridging and the hat gone from one side of the dance to the next, you know. That was kind of funny, Bridging, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. That was funny. But but it was, these things were all in good taste still, you know what I mean? You know. Right, the money is just kind of different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was all in good taste still and it was all in good humour, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But yeah, them them day there, there was some serious, serious man. You know, the dance, skanking wise, you know what I mean? I mean the money are skunk, it, it come in like it gets some so African mm. di directly, you know, right. some boy, this is someone that in dance like the, if you look back there, he's like the Watoozies, the mm. other man, no man, a go on mm. this boy, he's doing the Zulu rum. Yeah, character, he had some yeah. different character, yeah. man, some skillful man, there was a yeah. man who used to call, we used to call him drunken master, because he used to skank with a chair bridging, but this man was like an acrobat, the man was like an acrobat, he used to skank with his chair, and the chair, he just had flicked the chair boat, and I flick himself up with a chair. You know, it was amazing. You know, sometimes you have to just stop and watch his brother here. You know? You see a man one time with that one dance. And you see a man just, just, you know, a big friend and just lift up his foot. You see him put that, in mm. the air, and he just stay there, just like look at the foot. Mm. For about, mm. about four minutes, you know. Mm. No, he just see just like look up at the foot, and put mm. that wig in the name, just like, and just stand up there. And say, well, right. Amazing, man. Like yeah. But then they, you would have almost come like nothing. Mm. You, always, you, you always see something standing out like that, but no, they, you don't really see that. Well, funny enough, them day, day you know, them, them dances was a place where we could express ourselves. And I think that's why you have, used to have so much strong characters in there. You know what I'm saying? Because it was really the only place where, as black people, we, 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 that, you know, where you could really let yourself loose and just express yourself without. You know, people, people, um, without people feeling like they're in danger of you, sort of thing. Because you know, we've always been misunderstood, even until today. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we've always had to suppress ourselves. And the dance was a place now where, young yeah, man, a feel with time, feel with place, feel with space. You know what I'm saying? You know, can just let loose with the energy. You know what I'm saying? You know, flush out Babylon vibes. You know what I mean? You know. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Tenor, this question directed at you. As an artist, um, what countries have you performed in and what, which was your favourite and why? Out of all the places you've been, which one sticks in your mind and why? Uh, yeah. well, even, I think the most warmest, not warmest, but 
don't know. You know, sometimes when you sing another country, do you know the people them they don't speak English? You know what I mean? You, you wonder why I wonder if they really are, are listen to me I say. But you got you because you know your vibe anyway. But you see, let me do it. Like I've done a couple of shows in London. I've done two shows in London. Two in London, two to London, my barn and go. I mean, it's a bam. People, let me, let, me, let me talk to. Most people went to school a few miles away, or, you know, if worse, people just come from outside. You know. So it's an instant, instant, like, maybe a psychological, if you like, a communication. Boom, I just know. Like, I'm sitting there and talking with you. I say, yeah, last week that happened, blah, blah. And you would know, you know, Z. So, I think, yeah, that, that was the, the vibe. I think it was the dub club, you know. The dub club, uh, mm. the second one we done. Yeah. Yeah, that one day. The first one we do, all right, that was really the first proper show. I mean, really do still in my life. Um, respect to UK Culture Promotion, still. Um, yeah, that, that show, they go all right still. But the second one, no. First time me remember that one there the, the most. Remember all of them, but you know, no, just that one there. It's like a it's like a start off thing, you know. Start off properly. Something like that. Still. But done some other shows, other places and all of them good. All people they are very hospitable. You know, it's interesting to see the different cultures and how they can identify with each other self and so forth. It's the interesting part of it. You know, Israel, Spain, France, you know, Belgium, Norway, yeah, we had Ethiopia, and it's still at war now. Keith, it's the same to you. Yeah, um, that's what we have. I haven't done many I haven't really done many, many shows over the years, yeah. Um, the, the first actual show I've done, the live, live band, was with, with, with Tenor. The same thing Tenor was saying there. We had a band that we called um, Tenastalin and the Lionistics at that time there, you know. Um, yeah, so um, the, uh, we've done a few shows still, haven't we? We've done a uh, dog club twice, we've done Belgium. Supporting um, Johnny Clark and oh, Half Pint, yeah. 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 we don't know Wills, Cameroon we supporting up there. Um, but yeah, th them them shows were good. That that band, you know, was a it was a very enjoyable time for that band. You know what I mean? You know, Cameroon how long we lasted still, but the vibes was, was strong. You know what I mean? You know, if we kept on. You know, we'd have been a force. You know. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the most enjoyable show really would have been like the second Dog Club. Part two, the club, you, you know, um, that, that was well enjoyable because uh, me and the, you know, family day and the crowd and everything, you know what I mean? So it was personal, you know what I mean? You know, like, like the Belgian thing was deep and everything, but because like you're looking at the crowd and you see a family there and everything, and it, it just like it was nice, you yeah, know. I was playing this up, someone, someone says I was playing was Abba Shanti, it? Yeah, yeah, Shanti mm. was playing, mm. the blood Shanti on drums, still, mm. you know. Um, yeah, I've done a few gigs. Um, I've done a New York. I've done two gigs in New York. Last, last um, November gone still, you know. And that was a good vibe still. Linked to um, Ross Kush, Black Redemption label, yeah. More Black Redemption sound still. And um, it was me and Ross Moffitt went over there. And uh, we've done two gigs. And, you know, the vibe was really good, you know. It was really good, good reception from the people and team, you know. And it was kind of nice to go all that way and see people really deeply into the music. You know what I'm saying? Because for me, like I said, I, I, I'm I'm not well travelled in respect of doing gigs. You know what I'm saying? So for for me, it was a revelation still. Come I see a different race of people and them, everyone has skunk skunk in unity. You know what I mean? And it was like, why? Well, you know, it's um kind of deep, you know, so yeah, yeah, I think everything I've done I've kind of enjoyed anyway still, you know what I mean, you know. 
gentlemen who was coming to the end of this now, tell her what you have in the pipeline and what can we look forward to from you in the coming months. Well, the three releases here and there, but um, imminently the one that comes first to my mind is the, is the one where uh, I've done with Keith. There's, there's a few of them, more than a few. probably want to come in the pipeline still. Um, if, if I said the name now, and then you might hear another bad dub and say, why T? I think this tune here, you know. So I'm not going to say the name. I'm going to say the name. I have a few items still. You know. and, uh, that was, that was, some of my one release I'm recording that I've done. The first one I reckon will be the one from this stable, yeah. Casey, you like you? Yeah, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit funny still. I mean, tell have been talking about an album for the last, what, five years? <laughs> a lot of that even, did it? You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, there's um, quite a few releases coming out still. You know, um, there's going to be a true tenor. Like Teller said, but I don't want you say the name because I've got a bad idea of switching at the last minute, you know what I mean? But, um, look out for releases with tenor, definitely, you know what I'm saying? But there's a lot of tune coming, yeah, with myself, the big tunes coming with myself. Prince Allah, you know, some tough tune with Prince Allah. I don't know if people remember uh, Rastafari, you know, the relic of Rastafari I come. The Creation Stepper, yeah, there's a, a leak of Creation Stepper, I ain't even gonna say which one in time, my way here, you know what I mean, you know. So yeah, Creation Stepper, this tune coming with Creation Stepper. Judas Skender to Far Right, yeah, old Spudo one. Um, veteran Tough singer, yeah. So Judah and several other men. There's a artist called Aya Bingi, where no man no see an ear of. But in Tough Aya, you understand? And you have to see about that brother there soon, you know what I mean? You know, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear from him soon and you're gonna hear some vibes, you know what I mean? Um, Natali, old time bridge Natali. They were sitting from Natali. So there's a heap of things that go on, you know what I mean? Sometimes people feel like Black Legacy is kind of dormant at that time, but works are gone, you know what I'm saying? You know? I don't believe in Russian works, I believe in like everything as its appointed time, in time, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, a true it's message we are dealing with and upliftment. So we have to deal with things in, in order, you know what I'm saying? That's why releases come. In certain stages, you know what I mean. So, yeah, that's it. Good things happening. Good things happening. Well, gentlemen, is there anybody that you want to say? You want to big up on this interview? Well, if you did, there is easy chance. I produce as singers and players of instruments and people involved. Well, first, first and foremost, is to be out the creator, because without the creator, there's nothing. You know what I mean? You know, universal energy. You know, um, to big up, I have to big up my mother. Second, because that my, my mother gave me my spiritual nurturing, and who I am today is through my mother. You know, so my mother, my big brother Joseph. Because without him, I would have no musical grounding, you know, you know what I'm saying? And today, i still, I give you the education, you know what I mean? And the understanding of things. So, my brother, um, boy, everybody I know, everybody I love, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody that is dealing with upliftment, spiritual upliftment, truth, righteousness, quality, unity, because they're the key, they're the keys to life, you know what I'm saying? You know? So anyone that's dealing with these things, we can be gone. And that's me. Gentlemen, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, I am. Doing this thing, you know what I mean? Really and truly, amongst the black man, yeah. Uh.
this is what I say, I say, you know, basically, we once again, we've been left out, mm. out of his story. So we want to try and put that right. I was like, listen, when are we coming around to see him? Mm. Yeah, we're going to get everybody sorted, you know. And thank you, Tenet, again, yes, all right, for being, like, number one. Keaty? Yes, ma'am. I don't want nothing to happen to the hand because you're going to need that to load up some blank <laughs> CD. Boy! <laughs> Good. We want your gen um, gentleman, if, if you had a, a crystal ball, your own personal crystal ball that you could look into and predict the future of the music based on, on what you've observed in the dances across the years now. How do you see the future of the music tenor for you first? Uh, it's up is spread. You know, the music, music vibes are uh, spread. To the due to the indigenous beat, the foundation, every man can identify with that because it's in them. See, yet you have to know say Africa come from still to the center, yet all man come from Africa, so it's in every man. spread as it was in the beginning so it shall be in the end and the end now got done so the end for a new beginning but a more awareness you see and a more kind of unity thing still won't be perfect but it will be better than you know what was and in many senses what is it will be spread that's that Casey um if I could take a peek into the future, yeah, what I would like to see, what I would like, what, uh, you know, I think, I think um, the, the survival of this thing, yeah, um, depends on good quality music, you know, I think it's good quality music that can keep this thing surviving, because the thing about the sounds, right now you, you've got X amount of sounds out there, yeah, and um, they, they seem to be kind of obsessed with their sound, you know, I'm not sure how, how into the music they are, you know what I'm saying, because all I'm hearing is some serious weight line, and some serious top mid, and you know, some 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 lattice, which is good still, you know what I mean, because man's showing, you know, man's showing, showing what they can do with the thing, but I think we, we need to look at the bigger picture of it. And the sounds have to look at the bigger picture. Can they survive, yeah, just on flinging down some big weight line, you know what I'm saying, yeah? Or will they survive with playing quality music, you know what I'm saying? Because the weight line thing at some point is going to start to create fatigue. And fatigue will stop people from coming to the dances, you know what I'm saying? So if they concentrate on music and good quality music, which will ricochet back to the studios, you know what I'm saying? The producers have to produce good quality music that the song man can feel it and would rather to play good music than turn it up too loud. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a wide thing. It, I think everybody's got a part to play in it. But but if it, if it, if it just stays on this um, this big weight line and, and loudness, how, how far can it go without, without people getting getting them physically hurt? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, because that's what's going to happen. If all that's going to happen, the song man will get tone deaf, yeah? And they won't be able to hear how heavy the bass is. And they won't be, they won't be able to hear how heavy the, how loud the tops is. So they'll just turn it up and up and up and two twos. Boy, it's going to get a stage of paramedics, man. You know what I mean? There'll be paramedics outside the dance. You know what I'm saying? I can't have people. You know what I mean? You know, I don't death by bass and all them things there. When die of bass. <laughs> but no, I mean, I this Monday because it's an art form that I go on. And it's a deep art form. You know what I'm saying? And, and... There's there's a part there's a part in this thing right now where we I don't think any of us ever thought we would ever experience, you know the sort of sound quality that some man have got right now is amazing, definitely. But to the sound man, them yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm not saying anything that you don't know already because all I want to is skilled in what you do, you know what I mean. But you have to cap it, you have to cap it and keep it controlled, you know what I'm saying. Producers concentrate on producing quality music and we educate the masses towards the quality of the music you know what I'm saying you get me and then 
like I said, obviously producers produce good music. Someone man promote the music. You know what I'm saying? You know, and educate the people towards the quality of the music. That's the survival of this thing. You know, because you can only keep turning up to a degree, but music will last forever. You have to remember that we've we've we're really witnessing almost four decades now of roots reggae music. You know what I'm saying? Which, if we look back, it's a powerful thing, and it's transcended. It's really transcended, transcended time because there's certain music that we can all play today that sound like we, we don't know if it's been recorded today or, or, or 30, 40 years ago. That's how fresh the music still sounds. So we know that the music can 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 survive. You know what I'm saying? But but boy, end of the day, I'm a producer and an artist more time. Yeah, when I produce my tune, right, I do it to the best of my ability. Yeah, I hand it over to our sound man, boy. My, really my job done are you know you know what I'm saying and, and the thing about it now if you have wisdom and thing now then then you, you put it across properly so people can can get the benefit you know what I'm saying you know so it's not really loudness and loud bass but quality and let the music shine you know what I'm saying so it can survive you know what I mean you know that's 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 my vibe we have to remember don't want to talk too much <laughs> but we have to remember that it's, it's a legacy that we're continuing you know what I'm saying there's there's man from back in the day, you know what I'm saying that that kind of did um did did catch this vibe, you know what I'm saying from from poverty and sufferation and they're the things that we can't forget, you know what I'm saying because roots reggae music hasn't come from silver spoon people, it come from man in ghetto, we are living ghetto condition, you know what I'm saying if you listen to some of them old time tune, man I sing them lyrics there, white squall, Don Carlos. <laughs> If I say white squall of I, we, we know white squall more dry mouth, you know what I mean? So, we must say no, you understand, you know, we, we, I think we've got an obligation, right, to continue the legacy that them man have handed down to us, you know what I mean, by the grace of the Almighty, you know what I'm saying, you know? And, and from them time there, even with the sounds back in the day, it was concentrating on a quality sound so they can put across the music, it was music orientated, so we have to get back there, you know what I'm saying? And then we will survive. Yeah, man. God bless everyone, you know.